Yeah. Bam, we're live. I don't even remember sending you that. How is a long time ago? You just you do so many generous things. Sometimes you forget them. That is true. Good to see you, Ryan. When's the last time you've been on, Ryan? Uh, after Wadapalooza, I think. God, it feels like. Oh no, I made him. Oh, that's oh, right. Man. God, it feels like forever ago to me. Damn. I can't tell you how good it feels to be out of the snow and back at home. Oh, I bet. It's snowing here. My, my, it is? Yeah, it's been snowing for two days. Oh, wow. That's kind of nice, huh? Uh, I mean, I have to clear my car off four times yesterday. But... You have one of those scrapers? Yeah. I don't have one of those. The <laughs> rental car I had in Tahoe had one. <laughs> It doesn't that, snow much in Santa Cruz. It, it's the little things that matter so much. That that table that I sat at in Tahoe when we, the last four shows we did, my there's a, my knees don't go under the table, so I have to sit back here like this. You know what I mean? Like you're. Oh like, yeah. I oh, like and I mean, it, yeah, and it's, it wasn't even a table. It was like I was working on a dresser. The one behind me looks nice though. And the little things. Oh man, you should see that I am setting up here. <laughs> look at look at that. The couch is gone. It's... Yeah, and there's two chairs, and I got the new table. We're gonna have in. I'm gonna try to set up a show and have a Kalipa in here uh, as a test run, and Dave back in here as a test run. Awesome. It's yeah. evolving. Look at it. Look at the evolve. Yeah. Couch is gone. Is that a mic hooked up to it too? Like a... yeah, yeah. You see that? Oh, real life podcast studio, guys. You better get ready. Yeah. This is gonna be. Woo! We're gonna fly Brian out. Every show. I don't believe that. Yeah, don't don't. Get I take back that comment about all those generous things you did. <laughs> don't I, got all, I got all worked up. I, all worked up. Uh, I was I was researching uh, Sarah yesterday, and I couldn't find another podcast she's done since February, since the one she did with us, February of 2022. Damn. And she did that interview with Lauren on the boat. That was at Wadapalooza, right? Yeah, I was supposed to be on that boat, but I didn't make it in time. It was hey, like, why didn't you make it in time? The FAA was not operating that morning. Oh, your right. entire flight and everything was late. The entire country was late. The love seat is gone. Uh, Mom, The I'm, you know what I'm thinking about doing? <laughs> is it's, it's here. It's just right over there. By the way, when my mom says love seat, she means that like in the traditional sense. No one get it. It's not like the way I would use the word. I didn't even think about it like that too. So. Um, uh, that's like a technical term for a kind of uh, furniture. But mom, I'm going to come on, come over later on today and let's hang out. I haven't seen you in four days or I'll come over to your house and we'll talk about how I'm going to organize this. I'm just still, I'm going to try to incorporate the love seat. Let's just call it a couch. That'll be my spot. I'll sit right behind you. So no one can see in the, the love seat. Uh, Savan, do you think if you get if you moved your family to a different part of the country that your mom would follow? Yes, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, I, I moved seventy. I tested her out already once. I moved seventy. Is this your years. latest comment? You might be in trouble. Wait, what did she say? Uh, say it isn't so. Oh, which oh, uh, <laughs> no, we uh, which, need part? To talk. <laughs> which part? Which part? That one. <laughs> no, no, no. She's fine. She's she'll she'll be happy with the new setup. She'll be over here today. She'll be like, "Oh, you did a really good job." It might be. She might be talking about the fact that you shaved. No, she's no. Probably she's like... probably ecstatic that I shaved. No one in my family <laughs> likes anything I do. Trust me. They don't like the podcast. They don't like the hair on the face. They don't like it that my kids don't go to school. I'm I'm a but, but they but they suppress it. They suppress it. Yeah, she says. Uh, my mom says only if the couch comes with us. Of course, the couch. Whatever you want, mom. <laughs> Dark Lord Revon, uh, ten dollars. I was catching up with the show, and the Hunter show is awesome. Thanks, keeping it real. How often do you have him on? I hadn't had him on in a long time. That's yeah, the first time in a while. I feel like there was a, a time where he was coming on quite regularly, and then I don't know. He wanted. He wanted to be a reg. Everyone wants to be a regular. Until until it's time to be a regular, and then they, then they yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell it's time to put that work in. Yeah, yeah it's, it's not. It's like you know, you call them up. You're like, hey, we'll do one show a week, guys. Yeah, yeah. And then when you start doing one show a day, you don't understand why they don't have everyone can't do it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> people, other people have lives. They need time to eat, go to work. Oh my goodness. What did you think about um, before Sarah gets here? What did you think about Sarah's performance at Wadapalooza? 
I mean, I ever think everyone knows I was concerned about the fact she was doing both competitions. I was right. personally more invested in the individual competition. I thought she did very well there. Mm-hmm. And I actually are we talking about me. We are no, no, about some you. other blonde <laughs> Icelandic girl. <laughs> what it, and uh, oh, he asked me how I thought you did at Wadapalooza. Oh, uh, yeah. And I thought that you did very well in the individual side of things. I thought you made good choices. I thought it was a, a good performance you could build some confidence off of going into this season yeah and then i actually really enjoyed watching your team i thought you guys yeah. had a great attitude you guys oh, had, we had fun time. yeah and it was a and it was a cool team you know a, a lot of the teams there were like all the people were from the same part of the world so you had like team yeah. sweden or a team from south america and you guys yeah. did total opposite you got someone from yeah. brazil someone from iceland someone from uh, oceana and made a nice little yeah. team there who is the team again brian Oh, it was Campos. Campos was a late add on to the team. They were supposed yeah. to have Emily Rolf, who was from yet a different part of the world, but yeah. she obviously um, had a, an injury that couldn't do it. So it was very nice, Victoria. And she joined Sarah and Catlin Van Zyl. Oh, yeah, that's right. I always forget Van Zyl's name. Yeah. How do you say her name, Sarah? Call her Caitlin. Caitlin, you call her Caitlin. Yeah. Okay. And then do you ever say her last name? Van Zyl. Venzile. Yeah, that's I how I, I I'm I'm cool with that because that's the way I pronounced it. Venzile. Yeah. Caitlin I, I, Venzile. I, I don't feel like it's an Australian name, like a second name. Well, she married but, she because she's married to Johan Venzile, I guess. Yeah. And and maybe he's from somewhere else. Yeah. Hey Sarah, does anyone ever call you just but like when I um when I talk about when I talk about uh, Matt Souza, I always call him Souza. I don't really use his first name, Matt. Does any and, and same with uh, like Andrew Hiller. I don't call him Andrew. I call him Hiller. Does anyone ever call you like Sig- Sigmund's daughter, and not I mean, never use your first name? My first name is Ragnar, so I'm never called by my first name. Oh, say it. I, I was wondering if we were going to go here again. <laughs> I, I, I was just I, in my notes. Avoid her first name. Avoid it like the plague. But let's hear. Let's do it. Okay. Let's try again. What is it? Ragnar. <laughs> so it's Rakhavish Sara Sigmundsdóttir. That's my first name, and Rakhavish, Rakhavish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same, same. It, it, it sounds about right. <laughs> Rak, Rak, do it one more time for me. I'm really gonna try. Rakhavish. I got the first part right. Rak. Yeah, Rak, and then it's Hayvish. Hayvish is like hard Icelandic. Hayvish, Hayvish, Rakhavish. Ish. Oh wow! That, that I mean, yeah. those are some mouth skills. I know. This is mouth what we learned from. Hey, yeah, sh- Iceland. Um, I'm gonna go back and watch this, and and um, and, and so I don't bore the people in the audience and really try to get down. I was so proud of myself when I started being able to say Bjorgvin Carl Gudmundsson. And now that yeah, I can't I mean, say his name, I say the whole thing. What do you mean, pretty good? Uh, I mean, have you? Have you heard uh, what his town is called? That's even harder to pronounce. So he's from a town called Kvera <laughs> Gerði. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Good morning. It, make, it makes me feel like I have a low IQ. Like I don't have control yeah. over my tongue or my lips or my mouth. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Just live in Iceland for a few years. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it sorted. Where are you? Where are you, uh, Sada? I'm in Iceland. I just came back yesterday. Is that home for you now? I know that's a weird question to ask you. I mean, I would say uh, back is a home for me. <laughs> I traveled so much. Uh, for now, I mean, I'm based in Iceland, so uh, I'm going to spend some time here and then probably go back to Dubai and train there. So, uh, yeah, I just finished a three-month trip now, and... I was very ready to just go home and and calm down a little bit. And when you say a three month trip, you mean you were like you were moving from place to place for three months? Yeah, I just haven't been in Iceland for about three months, uh, short of three months. But so I started in Dubai, went from Dubai to Miami, then went from Miami to the UK, and now finally back in Iceland in the There's- snow and. You spend a lot. I've spent a lot of time in Dubai. Does it feel at all like home when you're there? Definitely feels like home. So I went there. So I took a lot of time off after last season. I was just very beat up my body and, and mentally. 
And um, so I just decided to take a, a long time off this year. And when I was starting to train again, I was like, I feel like I'm starting a lot of compensation here and I feel like I need some some extra eyes on me. So I decided to go back to Dubai and, and work pretty closely with uh, the physio that I've been working with since surgery. And, uh, and as soon as I <laughs> went to Dubai, it just felt like home because I stayed there for about like three months last year. And all the people were like, oh, we missed you. Like, I'm, I'm a part of so many gyms there and just met so many great new people. And, yeah, it almost feels like home there now. <laughs> do you have a place there or do you stay with someone? I stay with uh, my best friend, Carmen. Okay. And I think we yeah. talked about her on the last show. Okay. Yeah. And she's still, she's been living there for a while. She's been living there since 2016. She was going to stay there for two years and <laughs> she's still there, so... I don't think she'll ever going to move. <laughs> Sarah, when you came on the show, the last time you were on the show was February of 2022. And when you came yeah. on that show, I think you had just started also at a uh, training think tank. Well, you Max yeah. had been your coach for a year, but that was yeah. your first time actually after a year of training with him, you actually landed there and spent some time there. Um, yeah. Are you, are you still with training think tank? Yes, I'm still with Training Think Tank, but I'm working uh, more closely with another coach. And that's so I moved in with a coach and her name is Perrin. And we just connected in a very good way. And, and me and Max are still very good and he helps me if I need help. But um, so I just decided that Perrin would be like my, my main coach this year. So I'm still with Training Think Tank, but going to work uh, with a different coach. How many coaches have you had since 2000? Uh, when, when did you come in? 2013? 15? 13. Uh, so since 2013, I've had uh, Yami, John, um, Phil, Who? and then Who? Max. Phil Mansfield. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I've had four coaches. Well, okay. now Perrin. And now I have Perrin. First female coach that I'm working with, so it's uh, it, it, it makes a, a small difference. It does. Can you articulate that? Are there words for it? What makes a difference? It's just more understanding of what girls have to go through. Like, we have our cycle, we have our hormones, and, and uh, I think girls can relate a lot to that. Well, guys pretty much are afraid of that let's say that <laughs> hey is that a good thing that they can relate to it maybe, maybe uh, let me just play devil's advocate here maybe that they show yeah. too much compassion and empathy whereas a male coach might just like just push you through it like like a woman wouldn't care about a guy's balls hey just ride the fucking horse and shut up yeah. i don't care about it's, your balls i think that but i've never experienced that with a, with a guy coach but it's more just like oh i have something in my back or something like that. And then a female coach maybe relates more like this could be connected to your cycle or this could be right. Connected. Okay. Or like you have cramps or something like that. And it's like, okay, you have to do this and this and this because I've gone through this with other girls or something like that. So it's like female coaches are maybe more uh, experienced in, in the, the flaws of being a female when you're an right. athlete. Right. Right. Like, so I, I, I took it to a place where it might be a, a weakness, but you're saying, no, actually, there, there, there's also the other side, yeah. which makes perfect sense. Work, yeah. Working around those things or knowing how well, to this, deal with them. This concept of programming and training around a woman's cycle yeah. is something that I've yeah. been seeing more and more over the last six to 12 months. It is, is so interesting. So I, interesting. I know, you know, Savan used to have Kate Gordon on the show quite a bit down from Australia, and she was and continues to be very vocal and educational for women in that regard. <clears throat> yeah. I think I even had a conversation uh, with, with uh, like Camille at, down in, in La Palooza and she was becoming more and more sensitive to this as she even become a mom and all this other <laughs> stuff. Is it something that has also become more like relevant, like, like a, a, that you've become more aware of, or is it something you've always I, had to kind of deal with? I mean, what I find so interesting is just like, uh different times a month you your ligaments are looser because your body's preparing you for because you're more fertile so when i tear my acl i 
was ovulating and like so there's a holy there's, shit that's fascinating yeah wow. yeah so it's very very interesting of like what like i don't know like i think these are still a bit of theories now like not in quite proof yet but there's a lot of thought about like when you're ovulating you shouldn't be doing specific stuff you should be doing very light work more cardio than you're uh just got your period you're your strongest then you should be pushing weights again like you can program throughout where you are in your cycle so that is where i'm interested in i'm i'm not quite there yet where having babies and stuff like that 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 will be later on when i have my treatment. right <laughs> but now we're, we're focusing on injury free and how, how like what is the smartest thing to do with training when you well, are like and I think it's also very individualized of like I've always been very hypermobile. So if I get even more flexible and I'm doing a one rep max, that's more dangerous versus maybe a, a girl that's not mobile at all and she gets a little bit more flexibility when she's ovulating. Oh, okay, she can hit better positions now, so that's better for her. So it's very individualized. Let, let me ask you this, because I know, you know, I work at a at a gym, <clears throat> obviously a lot of women there and Sometimes I've yeah. been having these conversations a little bit, but when, when the schedule comes out for the year, because some people are very calculated. Some women are like, they know they can look two, three, six yeah. months ahead of time and expect I'll be ovulating at this time yeah. or whatever. And you yeah. see the schedule for a semifinal or the week that's chosen for the CrossFit games. Is it possible to look six months ahead and say, Ooh, that's a really good week for me for weightlifting or, Oh dang it. That's falling on the week. That's yeah. worse for me. Yeah, that's exactly the problem. You can't really, <laughs> or that's what I try to do is like, I'm not going to overthink because I think that adrenaline can help me through anything when I'm competing. Like, this is just my belief. I have no idea if it works or not. So if I'm ovulating when I have to qualify for the games and I have to do wonder marks, I'm not going to be like, guys, <laughs> I'm out. I'm not going to like, I think that adrenaline just does wonders for you so when you're in the right zone and headspace i think that that small part doesn't matter as much as when you're fatigued from training and you could actually just be smart with it so or maybe hey sarah can you can you change that sorry brian can you uh, isn't it if a group of women get together and they're with you and they live together don't their cycles start yeah. lining up could you could you change your could you ch somehow change your cycle by a few days here and there by who you're hanging out with yeah, you're good. You, you, you're gonna. See I know that sounds weird. I'm navigating to no man's land, but I've heard that shit, and I was like, "That's fascinating." It is so fascinating. That's I nice. like two Quiet, years. Siri. Sorry, that was Siri. I don't know why she's listening. <laughs> she's just fascinated, also. She's yeah. jealous because we have a, a different woman with four letters and an S and an R. <laughs> yeah. right. And Siri doesn't menstruate. She bombed. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, I think I don't think that. Um, like all girls can align together. I think it's very also independent of like how good your hormones are and everything like that. I mean, when I'm training hard, it's very hard for me to get my period. So that's a sign of, okay, I'm in overtraining now. I need to calm down a little bit. My system is is uh, in protection mode and in, in stress mode. And that's why I haven't had my period. Like, so it's it's a very interesting topic and very... Like, I would love to study this a lot more when I'm done with my career to help girls optimize their career around this. Because it can have a huge effect on you. Like, like having to worry about that you're on your period when you're competing and you're doing a swim event. Like, this takes focus from you. And, like, if you could do something to help, like, to help girls deal with it, I, I would love that. I was... um. <clears throat> I was at CrossFit Mayhem last week and I got a chance to meet Jim Hensel and he was talking about oh. the Mayhem mindset there. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And just the general idea was if you have more things in control in your life, then when you come to compete, those things won't be in the way and you can focus more on competing. And I think this is just an extra thing in, in life that women have to worry about that men in this sport don't. Exactly. And we worry enough already. Come on now. We, our mind is insane. So. If we can simplify this a lot, I think that would make a huge change in the female side of athletes. I mean, at, at the bottom of that pyramid for CrossFit is nutrition. And, and yeah. the premise for Greg's whole idea for using the zone diet was to balance your hormones. That was all it was. 
just yeah. to get your hormones as as, as regulated yeah. as possible. Yeah, because if you don't, that's where sickness happens. But yeah. wow, yeah. Um, and did you choose her because she was a was was that one of the factors why you choose uh, Perrin? No, I just I lived with her for a year, and like last year for me was a very mentally tough year. I mean, I just coming back from an injury is way tougher than I ever expected, and especially if you get hurdles on the way, and if you don't achieve what you were working for and and we just experienced a lot together and I just felt that I connected better with her because she knew me better than Max knew me like it's easier to open up to a girl that you've lived with for a year and that that sees exactly how you work and when you work your best versus having a coach that you just see sometimes a day and and talk to a little bit like it's more like I chose her because I just felt that we had a personal connection and I thought that she calms me a lot down. Like she, she sees when I'm triggered and when I'm in a stress mode and she knows exactly how to approach me versus maybe it, it's harder for a guy to read me. <laughs> or, and wow. yeah, I really like that because yeah. you know, it, it's, it's often very tempting and we've seen a lot of athletes make changes in the last couple of years to go towards the big name coaches, the big name yeah. programs. And obviously those, People are in, in those positions for a reason as well. But I think that sometimes the thing that's missing is that personal touch, that personal yeah. connection. And that's cool yeah. that you guys have developed that. Yeah. I mean, me and Max, we were great together also. It's just when you're at this level, you want everything to be up to 10 or up to T. Like, and I just felt like, okay, me and Max, we've done great stuff together. He's taught me so much. I think I need to get this personal connection a little bit better. And I think Perrin is the better one in that area. When I watch you compete in, um, at Wadapalooza, I was, um, I was nervous. I was thinking, uh, la last time we saw her here, she, she pulled out with, with a scare. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she, um, I, I saw her, I was like, Oh no, is this, um, you know, in the, in the horsing world, if a horse breaks its leg, they fucking kill it. And, I'm, yeah, and yeah. so, and so I see you sign up for both events. I'm like, what is she doing? Like, I just <laughs> want to see her go out on the floor and like smile and lift some heavy shit yeah. and leave. Like, I don't, I don't want to see uh, one of my favorite people who I enjoy taking the floor and, and, and kind of engaging with the crowd to get hurt. I don't care how she places. Can you just go on the court yeah. floor, lift something heavy, yeah. run across the finish line, go like this. And we get, yeah, there was, I, I don't know why I was so stressed out about you being out there. Yeah, you are not the only one. Let's say that everybody. <laughs> and then, are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, I am sure. And then I got sick on Friday, and I was like, Fuck! Why is this happening now? It's like with the with the with the cold, with the flu, yeah. something. Yeah, okay. I lost my voice for like four or five days. So yeah, it's um, it was um, Waterpalooza was the everything that I got out of it was exactly what I needed. I had okay, good. I was completely myself on the floor. Okay, I what I realized is that I'm not so far behind as I thought I was, and I did a lot of <laughs> mistakes, which is a very Sarah thing to do and and learn from it. So I just this was exactly what I needed. My body was great after it. I was very nervous on how uh, my knees would respond because the last time I competed, I was just very like. I just swole up right away and was just not recovering well. Was that semifinals? That was uh, semifinals and last year's qualifier. Last year's qualifier was just was even worse, just because I pushed to semifinals and then you didn't get a lot of break because it was like three weeks between and traveling back to Iceland, back to America, just like everything around it was just there was a lot of stress. Let's say that and. Uh, was there and, any thought about not doing the last chance qualifier last year? No, I was always going to do it. I was just wondering if I should do it in Iceland or if I should do it in, in Atlanta. And I, yeah, and I think I took the right decision. And I, I have so much faith that everything that happens to you happens for a reason. There's something like somebody's teaching me something. And, and I realized after last year's qualifier was like, I haven't taken an off season since after the games 2020 because when you when you have a major injury there's never an off season you're not maybe training as much but your mind 
is on hundred. Like your mind is working thousand times more than it's ever worked before. Like I would go to bed every night and think about how can I not lose what I've I've achieved? Mm. How can I be close to everybody after this? Like how can I not make this injury my like my last uh, like my last move in my career? Like how can I come back? How can I believe? Like your mind is just on hundred, and then you get then you get some wins, then you get some losses again, and your mind goes straight into okay, it's over, it's done. You're never gonna be as good again. You're never like that bad voice in your head. And I just felt it after last year's qualifier. I was like I've been for two years an athlete I never took my hat off after a competition or anything because I've been fighting so much to try to come back and uh and after those two months of just being a human being again and and uh seeing my friends and just have fun it was like all of a sudden I was myself again mm. this is a this is a cool actually a really cool thought as well you know the concept of taking an off season or or taking some time for yourself after whatever competition it is, is something that I think CrossFit athletes have to it's figure so out for hard. their own. But yeah. the mental side of it is a totally different game because you can <laughs> say, okay, I'm not going to train for a month. But during that month, if you're still going on Instagram and you see all the people that yeah. you know what you want to be better than or that are trying to be better than you doing yeah. something, yeah. how do you handle that mentally? Yeah, exactly. That comparison starts right away. And like, why Why is she starting to train now? And I'm not. Oh, my God, she's going to be ahead of me now. Wow, she did this much. Like, you're, you're constantly comparing yourself to what you're seeing on social media. And this was probably my hardest thing when I was coming back from injury was like, I was constantly getting the verification of how far I was behind. And I was like, they're lifting these much weights now and I can't even do an air squat. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like you're constantly breaking yourself down because you're so afraid of coming back. And I think that's what just, that's Sir, what pe- I needed a break. Sir, people think that they're going to have these thoughts and they're going to have another thought that's going to help it, right? They think that like, like you have this thought, hey, I'll never come back. I'll never be as good as I used to be. And people start looking for another thought that's going to fix it w- without yeah. realizing that, hey, dude, it's the thoughts that kind of get you in trouble. Yeah. It, it seems like always that the, the root is to, to the, the cure for that is just to accept that thought, right? Yeah. Hey, I have to accept the fact that I have to accept the fact that I might not be as good as I was before. I have to accept the yeah. fact that I might have these thoughts. I have to accept the fact that I can't accept these thoughts. I have to, it just has to just be this like looking into two mirrors, right? Just accepting, yeah. accepting into infinity, right? Because you're not going to come up with this thought all of a sudden and be like, oh my God, this thought fixes all of those thoughts. Yeah. No. And it's also like what I, study a lot i like i love neuroscience and everything and like there's a theory in neuroscience that like you if you connect an emotion to a thought it becomes 100 times stronger Mm. and then it affects you and it takes you about 90 seconds to connect an emotion to a thought so my rule was as soon as i got a bad thought i would try to like be as neutral as possible and just like (laughs) talk to myself in third person or like sarah this is a thought. There's nothing right like behind this. Like uh, this is just your, I don't know if you read chimp paradox, but like this is the chimp si- side of your brain. The one that just wants to protect you so much and wants you to just be home and never go out of the door again. So you won't get hurt. Just like, it's just a thought. It doesn't matter at all. Just let it go away. <laughs> so if and I want to remember something, I just, I just take a hammer. As soon as I have the thought, just hit myself in the hand. That thought yeah. will stay forever. Yeah. I'll have a, a, a strong emotional response. Or you can also use that in a different way of like when you are like there's a thing in, in psychology is that you have a band around your hands. And so you're in a workout and you get these bad thoughts of like, I can't. Oh, my God. Everybody's better than me. And then you hurt yourself. Oh, yeah. And, I've seen that. In some, I saw that in some movie. Just like yeah, Mark and, Mark and, or something. Ben Bergeron has done that. Uh, at, at, at comp train. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. So as soon as you hurt yourself, you should switch off from that victim mode and you should continue because that was the trigger of like, hey, I can do this. So you've already connected that pain to something that's going to get you back on your feet again <laughs> versus being like in overdrive in your mind. I'm going to get a shock caller. 
Yeah. Can you share it with me? <laughs> you yeah, th very that that uh that film the buttery bros uh, made that just came out a month ago it have, have you seen it it came out a month ago but it looks i think it's from 2019 regionals i have not watched it no okay well you might want to watch it i mean you might want to watch it might inspire you i mean you look absolutely yeah. amazing in there i mean yeah. it looks like you're running on 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 uh all on all cylinders yeah there's no question there. Okay. <laughs> Fine. Um, how did you ever end up seeing Jimi Hendrix penis? I didn't hear it. You broke up. I didn't have a question. I was just, there was a long, uncomfortable silence. That's it. So I'm oh, switching to something that? more comfortable. Jimi Hendrix's penis. <laughs> did you ever see Jimi Hendrix's oh, penis? Jimi Hendrix's penis is in Iceland in a museum. Uh, here. I understand. I, 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 and I'm wondering, I, I've, I've done my research and I'm wondering if you've seen it. I'm not, but it's on my bucket list. I'll promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> and and you you haven't ever even been to the penis museum? No, no. I mean, I didn't know about this penis museum until like, yeah, May last year when Snorri told me. And it was actually in the news in Iceland that Jimi Hendrix's penis was coming to it. It's, it's, it's not his. It's I not his actual penis, get, is it? Snorri says, Sarah, I, I know something that'll yeah. keep your mind off of training. Have you heard of this yeah. museum? <laughs> yeah, I think you should go there. But they have like all kinds of, uh, like I call it, peckers there. Yeah, so, peckers. That was a great word that you and Snorri used. That I like that word, pecker. Yeah. It's, it's gentle. You learn it from the UK. It's gentle. It's like a little bit more positive. What, what's the longest you've been anywhere in the last um, five years? What's the longest you've stayed somewhere without flying away? Uh, COVID, Iceland. And, and how, long were you, how long did you stay there? Oof, from it was actually a long time because I tore my ACL right after COVID. So it was actually from Feb yeah, February 2020 until uh, July 2021. Oh, so, okay. Wow. Okay. A little and then, bit more but, than but, a year. But since then, maybe three months. Three months is the longest that since then you like to move. Uh oh, she froze. Oh, you like to move, Sarah. Since then, it's probably only three months that you ever stayed in one place. Are yeah. we talking? Can you guys hear probably me? Probably three months is the okay. longest. Is there, is there an ice storm in Iceland? Is she frozen no, or is she just standing perfectly still? Am I frozen? No, you're Sarah. I'm Sarah. Okay, good. <laughs> There's actually not a snowstorm. Uh, so move, you love moving. You're you're not you don't you don't want to stay in one place and just and just and just train your ass off. You you like moving. I, Every couple of months you want to hit the road. I uh, yeah. I mean, I just get a lot out of being a butterfly and meeting new people, training in a new environment, and just changing it up. I I mean, I've I've tried the the recipe of just staying in one place for a long time. And I mean, I even did that last year with Atlanta with a little bit of breaks to Iceland, but I just, I, I uh, get so much energy of just <laughs> listening to my heart and be a free bird. And I mean, I don't get this opportunity ever again of what I'm doing. I can travel the world and work from all over the world while I'm meeting new people and learning about new cultures and everything. So like when I'm 80 years old, I want to talk to myself and say, like, Sarah, you did well, of like using all the opportunities that you got. I was listening to an uh, interview a friend of mine did with Matt Fraser the other day, and yeah. it was released the other day, at least. And he talked about this a little bit because yeah. <clears throat> Zach Tealander asked him, he said, you know, you're so regimented and you didn't have these like changes. And Matt was like, yeah, I mean, it was wild. I would see people make these big life shifts one month before the games, move across the country, and I couldn't comprehend it. But what he had qualified that with was, but that was that made sense to them. And what made sense to me and what made sense to them doesn't mean that one's right or wrong. It was just different. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, he is in such a comfortable setting of like he has a girlfriend that cooks for him, makes sure that he very limited things while I am – I get my self-esteem from being very independent and like do things myself and be like, I am doing this. Like 
I, th- like it's just a different like different way that people get self esteem and how they like I like to go to bed at night and think I did everything that I could today to be better and I am I don't have to rely on anybody and that's my thing. I thought I thought it was really a cool and actually important interview for him and that part of it because when he first retired he wrote that article that was came out on Morning Chalk Up and it was talk about these regimented details and attention to all these specific things and I think people maybe said like man if I want to be great or my greatest I have to do all of that stuff and that's so intimidating and this puts yeah. in a different perspective which yeah. the things that you individually have to do to be great are not necessarily the things that he did or that I do exactly yeah and everybody is so different and I mean I I listened to his podcast I think it was with Joe Rogan or something and he's he's talking about that his best friend was getting married and because of the flight or something or the change of routine or something like that, he didn't want to go. And this was like, I wouldn't say quite far off the season, but still like a month to go or something like that. And like, this would have a worse effect on me not going because like, that's just the different personalities of like, I would get energy of going and seeing my friends for these Mm. two days. And then I'm back into the zone and I, that as energy of like, okay, I already did this. Now I have to push harder because I took time off and I did this. So I have to make up for it. While he's focuses more on like, I need to have the routine complete up until the games because then I get my verification of like, I did everything I could. It's, it's so different for everybody. I had actually a, a really personal experience with that in college when I was playing soccer. The coach, uh, I had a important like family or friend obligation that I wanted to go to and I was going to miss a practice. And the coach came back to me and said, you're the captain of the team. You can't miss a practice for something like that. I skipped my grandmother's funeral for a game. And I'm like, well, we just have different values. Yeah. And he's like, well, you're on my team. So if you don't have the same values, then you can't be the captain. And I was like, then I don't want to be on your team. And we just couldn't see eye to eye on those things. But now when I'm thinking back on it, I'm like, man, both of us could have had more empathy, I think. Yeah, 100%. And it's also you you can get so lost in the things that don't have to matter so much. Like, I mean, uh, before last year's qualifier, my, my grandpa died and I had to choose if I was going to do the last year's qualifier or if I was going to go to Iceland to the funeral. And I chose the last year's qualifier because I thought, okay, he's he wants me to make it to the games again. He wants me to um, have a comeback. Well, like maybe one practice of being a captain and you can, you have to skip a funeral. It's like, it's like, it's not worth it. It causes more stress and more sadness. And then you don't perform as well because your focus is different and, and you feel that, um, like regret of not going. How did your grandfather die? So it's, uh, yeah, it's very, I, I just, uh, age, he was just uh yeah reached that age and just died peacefully thank god and yeah what a crazy decision to have to make it's like something out of a movie (laughs) yeah it was and it's so insane when you look back like i was like what if i had just done last year's qualifier in iceland i could have done both and like your mind is just it takes so many places and then you just have to remind yourself of like this was the best decision at that time. That's why I took it. And you can't regret it. And, and you have to also think um, – another way to think of it is, is if you had a granddaughter, yes. you, would ne- you would never want her – or a grandson, you would never want them to p- um, pass up an opportunity to go to your funeral. I would, n- I would, never, want my ch- yeah, I would never want my child to, to miss an opportunity for their life to go to my no, funeral. I, it's, it's, yeah, it's completely exactly. unnecessary. Yeah, and he he was such a proud grand, grandpa. Also, he like he had so many photos of me from the newspapers and stuff like that, just on his uh, in his living room. So I knew that my career meant a lot to him. Also, newspapers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, if there, you know, if he was uh, <laughs> if he was a fan of yours, anything like your parents are, I was down on the floor in Miami, and you know. Yeah. In Miami, it's wild. Like it, it's difficult to get a spot you want. But every time I look <laughs> up in the stands, and lo and behold, there are your parents, front and center. They always. Sarah, find your a parents way. came to Miami. They 
my mom shows up four hours before I start just to make sure she has the right seat in front of the right lane. And she makes sure of this, like, <laughs> this is her big priority. That's how much of a fan they are or like how much they know I love their support. And and you and you said you were able to be yourself at Wadapalooza. You're able to be yourself around your parents. Yeah, always. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. And are you glad they come, or does it stress you out? No, I I love when they come, but I I I like to be in my own zone before the competition. But I know that they enjoy also just making a trip from freaking storms in <laughs> Miami <laughs> and. Uh, and having a meaning in their trip. So I think they enjoy it as much as I enjoy getting their support. And it's also good to have somebody if, if you need something, it's always easy to ask your parents for it. So like, mom, can you go to Whole Foods and get me this right now? And, and she knows that it's important. So having somebody like that. Yeah, it, totally. And, 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 and you don't feel bad asking them, you know, that they want to be a part of it. And, and so it's easy on your mind too. Yeah. Hey, um, when, when, as an athlete now, so since 2013, you, we're, we're approaching 10 years. There's got to be so many things that people d that you didn't think, specifically hardships that come with what you're doing that you never even imagined when you're 30. When, in, in, when you're, uh, I don't 30. know, how old are you? 20? How old are you now? You're 30? I'm 30 now, yeah. So when you're 20 and you're like, okay, I'm going to start this journey. I'm going to put the marine biologist thing on hold. I'm going to start this journey <laughs> to becoming a, a, a CrossFit athlete. Are there things that you're like, wow, no one told me that? Or, God, I never even thought it would be this hard. Or, holy cow. Like, I am still just in shock that I'm at the place where I am. <laughs> like, Still, okay. Yeah, like this is still just very unreal for me. It's like... I mean, if you would have talked to me when I was 16, you would never see any athleticism in me. You would see that I'm strong or something like that, like strong built. But you would never think that, like, I gave up on everything before I even tried. I just, I had so little faith in me and I had zero just, yeah, zero goals. And my thing was just to have fun with my friends all the time, like, there Did boys like you um, in 2000 in, in, uh, when you were a 16-year-old girl? Boys have always liked me. You should know. Oh, it's... okay. Okay. Oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. I mean, now they really like you. As soon as you came on, like, I think some guy already asked to marry you. Oh, really? <laughs> in the comments, yeah. But, yeah, I I was, um, like, I just started high school at that time and just was a total babe. And, there he is. Uh, there he is, Dante. There, there he is. <laughs> Ah, uh, Dante, let me think about this. Let me think about this. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't that. It was just, um, yeah, I, I still am just reminding myself of how freaking lucky I am to have had this experience. And, of course, when I'm dealing with injuries and especially tearing my ACL and going through all that, I was just like, is this worth it? Am I, am I just destroying my body? Am I going to be like have injured knees the rest of my life if I continue and like the health of my body is it is it in stake like you think about all these extra things and then it's just like come on shut up just live in the moment and enjoy what you're actually experiencing when when I go to the store and and I and I'm and I let's say I check out I, I'm at you know Whole Foods or wherever I'm at I can see every most of the people are just going through the motions yeah. Um, they're just on autopilot. They're, they're not like, they don't, they're not being present with me. They're not engaging me. It's almost like, um, as I walk around the world, I just, I'm, I'm with zombies Yeah. because I'm present and I just see, and I, they're just faking it and slowly they, they fall asleep and then you run into someone who's awake and you're like, Oh, here's two of us who are actually awake. Yeah. I don't, you can't do that as a professional athlete, right? You can never – it's not like working at 7-Eleven where you can just be like uh, 3 95 do you, uh, do you want a bag with that? Uh, I mean, it Marlboro would be – Marlboro Lights, Marlboro Lights. We're out of Marlboro Lights. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like you can never – it seems like it would be so hard to do what you do. That like – here's what I was thinking this morning. I was thinking you're 20 years old. You want to be a CrossFit Games athlete. Now you're 25 and you're pretty good at it. And you're like, fuck, what have I gotten myself into? I have to wake up every morning and give 100%. I can never fake it and just be like, here's your no. change, sir. <laughs> no, I, I've always just been so driven and loved what I do. I love waking up. I, I love the feeling of hard work and 
And it's almost like I wish my body could just handle more of hard work so I could mm. do more. <laughs> but it's never You're addicted been... to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm so addicted to it. And I'm so addicted to the feeling of knowing that I'm working for something. And I think that what I experienced 2015 of like, I could have been the first rookie to win the games and then I lose it in the last workout. Like that still sits with me. And that's, that's still my drive of like, I haven't reached what I can reach. And going through all injuries and all the bumpy roads on the way is like, it's what makes you the strong character that you are. And I think also like sports are, are preparing you for, a lot of things in life and like you go through the same stages in when you lose somebody as when you have an injury like the grief states the sad states the anger states like so it's i i just try to be that person that never regrets anything and and tries to see what i actually have because i think that people that get lost in oh i have to do this or i was like everybody's expecting this from me. So that's why I'm doing this. You're never going to be good at it because you're not doing it for yourself. Could you teach someone that? To be. <laughs> because you weren't always like that. Do you think you could uh, teach someone to enjoy hard work and be the best at what they, and be the, give it their most every single day and to enjoy that? I think like my theory around this is that I gave up on everything because I had no self-esteem. I was just, very fragile like i would try sports and then a girl would say one comment to me and i would quit because i was so afraid that um that she would comment again something about me so i so was like if i was playing basketball if some guy said to me hey you don't have the right body for basketball i would quit yeah uh, that, that's exactly how i was and i would yeah. never do anything unless i was with somebody because that was my security so like my best friends would have had to do something uh, some sports for me to be able to do it or else I wouldn't do it. So that's why I was more into music at that time. I was just, I loved to just sit on the piano and just play. Cause that was like my, my zone and nobody was around me, but sports was like, you got calm, especially when you're on a fragile age of like, you got comments of, Oh my gosh, why does Sarah always turn so red in her face? Like you were different. And that would be like, oh, my God, I never want people to see me as different as what I should be. So I'm not going to do it. So, like, that that's the reason why I didn't do anything. And then when I start um, in, like, this boot camp seminar and, and there was a coach there that saw something in me that I never expected anybody else to see <laughs> or didn't even know about myself is what you're very determined. And I was like, no, I'm actually not. I'm a... <laughs> up <laughs> and he oh you're not you you were able to do this and he like actually made me think like oh i actually did this and the other girls didn't do it which made me different what was his name uh, his name was uh gunnar gunnar yeah i called him gunnar ben and, and he he said something to you that's what, what we call in my family stuck yeah, when someone says stuck. something to you that's stuck, they believed in you and it's stuck. Yeah, like you have, like my rule in life now is just like, if I have a compliment for anybody, I compliment them. Like mm. as soon as I can, because that one compliment changed my life because I never thought that anybody saw anything in me. Like I had just accepted that I was born in this world with zero talents <laughs> and I was just supposed to float with a, with the uh, crew <laughs> yeah, yeah and that's yeah. so far yeah so so i uh, just getting this one comment and seeing actually oh there's something different with me i wanna i wanna get a compliment again so we're running today and i'm not gonna show him that i'm tired like i just made up these games in my head and from there i started seeing results and from seeing results i started to get addicted to hard work and like, it's just, it's so insane how self-esteem plays the biggest role in everything you do. This is actually, uh, I'm glad you got back to the hard work because I was thinking about this a few minutes ago. You know, when, as you become more and more addicted to that, a, a lot of times, especially young athlete, then it becomes more time in the gym, more time lifting yeah. weights, more time on the track. As you mm -hmm. age and go through these last 10 years and you put more toll on your body, 
Have you had yeah. a, like a, a progression of realizing that there are other ways I can apply that addiction to hard work, like making yeah. sure that I get more sleep or making sure yeah. that I do my meal prep? And what's that transition been like? That's been very hard. <laughs> and I feel like Sam Briggs is uh, probably uh, one that connects a lot. Is like it's so hard for you to accept that <laughs> you can't do as much as you want. And you're in denial. And as soon as you're in denial, you get injured. So it's like, fuck, I should have listened to my body. But it's, um, I find it very good to just like, actually, like what I've done the last 10 years is that I've, um, how do I say this? Like I've made um, almost what I do autopilot, like everything, like all the experience that I have and everything, like I can use that as, an advantage of like not having to do as much now because I have that experience. Am I saying this right? Do you understand what I mean? <laughs> it looks I, like don't, I, it looks don't, like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Can you talk to me like I'm a three-year-old? Don't quit looking at me like I'm a seven-year-old. Huh? huh? Okay. Okay. You're saying that you, you're saying you've built up enough. So what, you have you have a you have a, a reservoir yeah. of, of experience and strength already, or? <laughs> okay, so what I mean with this is, a person at my age. You froze. Sarah. I would say that if a person that's thirty years old is starting CrossFit now, I, I have a better background than them because i have some experience in it while that person at 30 would have to do much more volume of everything to learn everything from scratch while i was lucky enough to start it at earlier age that's what i mean with this is like the volume that i did the last 10 years doesn't have to be the same because i already have the foundations of everything okay while a person that's 30 years old would start crossing now and is going to be a professional athlete they would have to put loads more time just to get the foundation right and work on that on an older body yeah on an older body so like what i try to remind myself of now is like okay nutrition actually is 80 percent of success <laughs> let's say that like if you get the right fuel your body reacts in a way different and better way so if i can optimize my nutrition if i can optimize my sleep this is my recovery routine i have to do an ice bath for a total of 30 minutes a week. I have to do a sauna, a total of 90 minutes a week. I have to stretch four times a week. Like I make these goals of recovery uh, versus like, instead of just having a training plan, I also have a recovery plan. I also have a, like uh, a nutrition plan. So like all of these things combined together gives me the same hours that I used to train at when I was at a younger age. Let's say that. It's like uh um, I don't know, 12 or so years ago, I lived in the Dominican Republic and there was no hot water. So I just got used to taking cold shower. And, and then, you know, now yeah. it's like a popular thing, like you're mentioning to do these cold plunges or whatever. Well, sometimes it's cold yeah. here in Chicago, the water doesn't turn on and it's not hot. And uh, I don't have time to wait around for it to warm up for 10 minutes, but because I have a history of doing cold showers, I can handle it better than someone who's never been in that situation. You can build in these patterns, healthy patterns, to prepare yourself for situations that are maybe less than ideal as well. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Uh, Sarah, I have an idea for you. Exactly. I just thought of it because you were because you were saying Tell me eight, everything. You were saying that eighty percent of uh of uh of, of training, let's say it's nutrition. You were just giving like a hypothetical. I have this idea. You can share this with Snorri, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, here we go. It's a Snickers. It's a Snickers ad. Oh my god! Yeah, but and you actually I write. You actually, write, I eat this shit, and it's a picture of you holding it. Not a lot, and then on the bottom it says, "Not a lot of it, just some." But you actually, I eat, and, and I. And it's a million dollar idea. Yeah, I mean, one I million dollars. Get it because yeah. it's authentic. Yeah. By the way, I had no idea that Snickers had peanut butter. I was so happy when <laughs> I saw this. Yeah, same. And I also found M. M&M's and uh, Biscoff. Oh, my goodness. There's so many good ones. But I don't think we have Snickers peanut butter in the United States. I don't think we do. No, I found this in Denmark. Imagine that. 
I, so Snorri, I only want 3%, 3% of a million would be $30,000 yeah. for that idea. It's, it's a small, <laughs> it's a small, um, yeah. there's a post you made that I really, really like. I think it's your most recent post. And um, I'm wondering if you could tell me what inspired this. It says, if you see me less, it's because I'm doing more. Oh, this isn't actually a post for me. This is a photographer that tagged me in that post. And I read that caption and I was like, she's speaking from my heart or yeah. 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 But I mean, that's exactly you, you haven't done. You haven't done a podcast since the last time you were on this podcast. I've been in the in the dark now. Or what do you call it? Is it in the dark? When Training in the in, dark. Training in the dark and like not not too active on social media. I've just been tunnel vision of training and just getting back into it. This is a super relevant topic for me because I'm preparing a top 100 list coming into the season. And I have, you know, there's a lot of athletes out there that do the off season. And so they're visible and you see what they're doing and you can make these data points. They're doing well or not. They're getting stronger yeah. or not. But there's a whole yes. nother group of athletes that choose to do nothing in the off season. We haven't seen them since semifinals and no one yeah. really knows what they've been doing and what we're going to see from them 12 months later. Yeah. This is the exciting part also. What, what happens to what happens when you have to cross uh, uh, stop doing CrossFit and this thing that you've built, built your self-esteem on is no longer there. Do you, um, are you like an alchemist? Or do you know how to switch it to something else? Yeah, I'm already there. Like, I mean, I always, I have so many hobbies and so many things I want to learn. <laughs> Such a long list. So like I started uh, studying uh, private pilots uh, after last year's qualifier this year. So I mean, I've always wanted to be like in some way connected to the airplane world. And I just took the decision this year. I'm just like, I might as well try to be a pilot. We either go all in or we don't, right? Because she never wants to stop traveling all over the world. <laughs> no, I never want to stop traveling. <laughs> I love it. And it's also just such an interesting world of like, yeah, being like just this thought around that there's an airplane that flies it's insane, right? It is insane. Yeah, that somebody just found the perfect drag, thrust, lift <laughs> ratio for an airplane. And like, I, I've just always found this very fascinating. And there's just also, I don't know, I think it's very, um, I mean, CrossFit has been a big part of like making strong females or like normalizing the strong female image. And I think that in the pilot world, it's, it's also getting better there. Like females are allowed to be pilots now. Like before it would be like a very weird thing if a female was flying your plane. And like maybe some old school people would be like, I don't trust a female to fly this plane. Like, and this is something that needs to be changed and it's already changing. And I think that's one of the, the fascinating things about it is like it's a challenge of being a female in this world, the flight world. When um, so, but I, I I hear you on the flight thing, but, but I'm thinking more like can you change? Can you transcend self esteem? I think that you have to build two two different type of self esteems, and that one self esteem is your athletic self-esteem and that's i'm i don't have the same self-esteem when i'm out with the girls and in a dress or something i have a way different self-esteem then compared to when i'm in my crossfit gear and going on to the floor and there's heavy dt like that's two different sarahs and i think that if you don't forget your like self-esteem one let's call it that I think it will transfer into everything else. That's like the base self-esteem that you have. And you have to be sure that it that you're actually working on it every day like you do with your athletic um, identity. So I think, like, of course, you can get more self-esteem from achieving a lot of things, but you shouldn't define yourself of what you've achieved. And, it, like, it's... Uh, I read this uh, quote... I think it was just three days ago. I'm trying to remember exactly how it was, but it was like, what is your identity 
without any of your achievements, like when you're completely like your CV is just completely naked. Like what, who are you? Who are you without your achievements? And that's your, that's the identity one, as I call it. It's like, who am I without anything that I've accomplished and without me going to school and be good at something and getting my self-esteem from being one of those type of people. Yeah. That's the and question. I think that's, right? that's, that's the question. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So I think that if you work on that, of like your core values and stuff, I think that's easier to transfer after your athletic career. I guess but that I is what it, you just explained it to me. You explained it perfectly there. I never even thought of it like that. You, you, the two types of self is self esteem is, is sort of the superficial one, and I don't say that in a negative way, but it's no, it's um it I have this podcast and and Brian's yeah. a coach and a sports analyst and you and you're a um a professional athlete who who loves uh, being on the floor performing, and then there's the other the other one is your values, and yeah. you can get a shitload of self esteem by really having high values a ton. Yeah. By staying true and, to your values. Yeah, exactly. And and yet I'm, at the same time, they're nothing. They're they're nothing compared to going out on the stage and lifting 300 pounds over your head. Yeah, but they are so strong. <laughs> like, yes, yes. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to remember that the rest of my life. I wish I had like a rubber band or a hammer to hit myself. <laughs> I, I, this is this is a huge this is a huge breakthrough for me. I love yeah. this. Yes. You're welcome, Simone. You're welcome. Because my whole life, I've always wondered about values and morals and how when people yeah. had values and morals, I'm like, I don't think I have any of those. But lately in the last few years, I've noticed I'm like cultivating them because I have kids, right? Yeah. And your values can change. Like, can right. change through years and what you're doing and everything like that. But I think that your core values are always the same. It's like, depends on what kind of personality you are. Like... I, I'm a, an empath just since I was little. Like I loved helping people and I always thought I would end up as a nurse or something because I just, I get so much out of knowing that I've helped somebody. So while a different personality can get so much out of just making somebody laugh or something like that, like, so like your values are, they can change. And, but I think the core values are always the same. God, what a but great, it's hard I'm, to I'm gonna... find. Yeah. I'm going to teach my kids this. Yeah. You know what part of that that is, is like really resonating with me is the what do, what are you wearing? Like you talked about when I put on a dress and go out to girls, I feel different than when I put yeah. on a sports bra and, and shorts and go out to compete. And it's because like, yeah. I, you know, there's times that I put on an, uh, an outfit and it does. I don't even have to look at it. I'm just like, this isn't me. Like, I don't feel good in this. Yeah, exactly. Hey, um. We all, I, I, I so much, I get it too also because I so much rather seen the girls uh, walk out onto the floor with a ponytail in their hair and singularly focused on the task at hand. I find that so much more attractive than a woman who I can see has put in a lot of work and she's uh, on her appearance and is, um, and, and is, it, it just doesn't, sometimes I almost feel like, wow, you should never do a shoot, not you personally, but I think about this when I see these models on Instagram you should never do a shoot unless you're, you just worked out. Like that is your fucking most attractive look hair in a ponytail with your Lululemons yeah. on and a sports bra and like sweat dripping off you. Like it's your look. You're doing it. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. I agree. hundred percent. It's also just, there's so much attraction to what a person can do. And I think that, when you're in that type of zone of you know that you're gonna fuck shit up, your self esteem comes there, and that self esteem is almost like it shows off, and it's like you see that a person is in their element. While, like, let's say that Victoria's Secret model model is in a way different element than me when I'm in a athletic photo shoot while she's in a in a bikini photo shoot or something like that. Right. Like. And or or those wings on them. Different. There's no practicality to those wings. I I don't find anything like I'm I'm, I'm not interested in watching the Victoria's Secrets to shit. Yeah. Yeah. You have to remember that they're angels. 
They're, okay. <laughs> hey, I was thinking about this too. I would rather see a huge diamond used to cut a piece of glass and then you sneak into the building and rob the shit than a huge diamond on someone's finger. The diamond on someone's finger does nothing for me, but then when they take the diamond yeah. and cut the hole in the glass and sneak in. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you there. So it's, it's, it's a diamond in, in action. You want the practical application. Sarah, does it? Bo I've never heard anyone accuse you yeah. of being on um, steroids. Does that bother you? Are you like, what yes. the fuck? Why? What? What am I doing? What? What? What's going on here? How come no one's accusing you? Uh, I can't hear. Can I, you hear? No. Pretty much says everything. <laughs> uh, I've been accused a lot in person. Let's say that, or on social media, of just like you post the photo of you from a competition, and your muscles are very obvious, and it's just like ah. You can't people, hear me. Yeah, barely. So, so you're saying you have? Here's the. Can you hear in, me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Let me let me ask the question again, and, and I'm gonna give you a part B to it. No. The, okay, fine. I won't. <laughs> no, I know she didn't mean that. Uh, Sarah, if I can't hear you, if if um, one because I'm talking. Um, I I don't see people accuse you of doing steroids, and the other thing is um. Uh, when you start, when you're 20 years old and you come into the sport, you just want to be the best you can be. And those aren't the things people prepare you for. No one whispered in your ear at 20, by the way, at some point when you get really successful, people are going to call you a cheater. Like no one tells you that, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, and it's also, it's extra hard when you're a girl because before I would say that, well, it's more normalized now, but being a girl and having muscles, it was like, Especially when your muscles are a little bit on the bigger side of like, uh, it's not natural for girls to have muscles. And it's like, yeah, it is. We just haven't shown the world that what we're capable of until now. And that's why we have bigger muscles. Like, uh, so I think that the beginning of my career and, and when my body was developing into this muscular female, I was very insecure. And if anybody would bring any comment, it was very hurtful because you put in so much hard work and then somebody just accuses you to go the easier route. <laughs> and like the easier route is not like on the menu. <laughs> like if you go the easier route, you will always, it will always hurt you in some other way. And like, that's what I believe. And I think that steroids and finding the, the easy way, it's just going to, why would you choose the easy way when you can actually go through the hard work and stand on that podium and think it was me that did all of this instead of I wasn't enough. I had to cheat to get to where I am now. And now I have to continue to cheat because I don't believe that I can do this without something more than my body is capable of. Plus this the is mental how I look stress. at steroid I, use. It's like you're almost the mental stress on your self-esteem at the same time of telling your yeah yeah Damn, i wonder what happened to the connection we, the connection got so choppy can you tell it got choppy i don't know if you're just messing with me always or if it's choppy <laughs> no it's choppy i try not to mess with you i try not to mess with you <laughs> it's okay i can handle it though um but no one, no one tells you that. Those are the things. There's all sorts of things that come with the sport that no yeah. one tells you. I want to go back to the thing that you said. You're, you're an, um, an empath. You're, you're very uh, empathetic. That doesn't make your life any easier, uh, also, right? Um, it, you don't want to be an empath and have over a million followers on Instagram. It sounds like a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have Snorri to help me. <laughs> yeah, D does he? Yeah, he helps me a lot. He, I mean. He is the reason why I'm even active on social media. Let's say that <laughs> I I was so lost in this. Uh, when I was starting CrossFit, I had no idea even what Instagram was. I had posted one photo, and that was because my best friend got a free bag. And that's my first post of all time. And then I compete at the CrossFit Games, and I get like 300,000 followers or something after it. And I was like, how do I deal with this? <laughs> And um, and then, uh, thank God, I met Snorri to help me a little bit with 
how you look at social media and how you use that platform for the benefits of it. Savan, do you mind if I ask a fun question about Snorri? No, no, please go ahead. Don't let me. I want to ask her if she has a boyfriend. Don't let me forget. Go ahead, Ryan. <laughs> it's like this is like a dating show, Sarah. It's how well do you know Snorri yeah. and how well does he know you? So yeah. my, parent, my parents were going to Iceland last fall, and I asked him for two restaurant recommendations in Reykjavik, and he told me his, what he thought was his favorite and your favorite restaurant. Yeah. Do you know them one yeah. or both? I mean, my favorite restaurant, I know that, but his favorite restaurant, fuck. Well, what, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that he loves food, so there's probably a, yeah. a many that he could choose, it, but what would you say? Place, yeah, some kind of steak place in Iceland. And what would you say was yours? Mine is Sushi Social. That's correct. Sushi Social. And he chose Fish Company, actually. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Uh, you guys passed the test. Yeah. Yeah, Sushi. If I had to just pick one food to eat the rest of my life, I think it would be Sushi also. Oh, my gosh. So when you come to Iceland, Simon, again, because you've yeah. been here before, you Sushi Social. Um, you know, sir, one of my friends just went out, um, he just bought a really nice, uh, sailboat and, and, and now he can go on any sailboat anywhere in the world. You basically, you buy a really nice sailboat and you put it into like a, like an Airbnb type of thing. Yes. Or, or like, and so, could... yes. Mm. And, and he said it, he, he, he goes, now, what? Oh, now you're making me add to my list of what I want. <laughs> hey, checks out. So he takes his family onto these sailboats out in the middle of the Caribbean. He says the chef jumps off the boat and catches a tuna or some big fish, brings it onto the boat, cuts the fish open, and you just start eating it right there raw like that. He says it's the best tasting thing you've ever had in your life. I mean, I could see that. Yeah, doesn't that sound amazing? Just like fresh sushi, just right there. Yeah, that's insane. Do you like so much wasabi that it burns your eyes? I do. <laughs> like wasabi that's the uh, only thing i don't uh, i don't like spice i like the wasabi i like it to burn my eyes you have to mix wasabi with the um, soy sauce that makes it a little bit better uh, patrick clark sarah when that's, is your next yacht uh, when is your next yacht party <laughs> when is my next yacht party uh, i mean next water palooza of course uh it's, ross it's lewis coming a tradition huh Dollar nine. Sarah and Brian Fender are two of my favorites. Hit the like button. Oh, that's so sweet. I feel left out. <laughs> uh, Sarah, do you have a do you have a boyfriend? I don't have an answer for that. Is there something else I can help with? No, Sarah. I'm talking to Sarah, not you. Please be quiet during the show. Uh, Thank you. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. No, no, it is, but there's always someone courting you, right? I feel like she's now you're messing with but us. You're she pretending had the same answer for me. You're, you're pretending, uh, that don't you're, have an answer for that. You, you don't have an answer for that. You don't know if you're always being courted. I'm just messing. No, I, I don't have a boyfriend and, and no courtship. No, what? courtship there's no one is there anyone actively pursuing you no comment <laughs> okay well, the, let me so i i've interviewed a, a, a lot of people and one of the themes that i've come across with um men uh, these very very alpha dominant men is that they don't um they don't chase women they stay focused on doing whatever they do hunting buffalo and, uh, and, and, and the women come to them, right? Yeah. Um, here you are, this very focused woman who has a, um, a, a, vo a job, a vocation, a hobby that's all consuming. And, 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 you know, you can tell me I'm totally wrong, but if the natural order of things is for women to pursue a man, how would you have time to do that? Oof, you don't really have time to do that. It's either... Do you even know how to do that? Would you know how to pursue... What, have you ever pursued a man? What happens if you pursue a man? I think it very... It depends on the man, you know? It's a, it's a very interesting topic, actually. And especially because you have very different type of guys. And, like, um, 
guys that maybe aren't quite alpha or secure with themselves, they are very insecure uh, when a strong female approaches them. Let's say that. So I think that it's a very it's a very interesting topic, but it, I mean I'm not much of of an approacher to guys. I usually let them come to me, but mm. it wouldn't. If I would see something that I like, I would approach it. But I feel like when you're very focused on what you are striving for, these things come to the side a little bit. And then what happens, happens. Either the guy that you're seeing fits into your life or your routine, but you're never sacrificing that for a guy. Um, what about the fact that um, people, there's there's the Sarah in their head that's this public Sarah versus yeah. the Sarah that is, and that someone has to, uh, people in your life, either man or woman, have to reconcile those. Like, oh, wow, Sarah actually pees and poops too. And, yeah. oh, wow, sometimes she sometimes she uh, has food or a booger hanging out of her nose. Like, yeah. people like, uh, how do people recognize, rec do you see people having trouble reconciling that? Very often. Or they try oh. to keep you in a box? Yeah, or they have already made a specific opinion of how exactly I am just from watching videos of me or something. And it's like I, how I am in competition and in documentaries and stuff is not how I am in all areas. It's like I have more to me than only CrossFit. And I think yeah. that people, like, I think my biggest fear would be uh, seeing somebody that's only seeing me for what I have achieved and being dating a Sarah Sigmund's daughter, like getting right, that, right. that tick mark. Right. Like how, how can you see that? Like how I feel about having you on this podcast. Oh, great. I got Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Uh, tick, yes, yeah. Yes, but, you, yes, yes. but it's different if it's personal, you know? Of course, of, of course, of course. I think it's another... I think it's another really interesting thing about this sport is you've seen, we have seen over the, its timeline, people that have very, um, you know, very consistent and kind of public relationships do very well. We've also yeah. seen people with very consistent and private relationships do well. And then we've yeah. also seen people that have, you know, relatively no relationship do well in the sport. In your case, do you think that, uh, do you ever talk, talk to yourself and think that it's an advantage or a disadvantage one way or the other? No, I just think that everybody's so different. And I think that it could 100% help somebody a little bit. I mean, we saw the change in Kara Webb when she just um, went out of a, a marriage that she wasn't happy in and met a new guy and and just found a guy that I would say, like, is her soulmate and them two together is just the sweetest thing. And I think that's an advantage of finding something that, fits with you and doesn't change you in a worse way. But I think that from where I am is that I'm, I get so much from being independent and if it would like, I would be afraid that I would get addicted to something that wouldn't be uh, reliable later on. Like, let's say that like Tia, for example, if, if Shane would break up with Tia, what would Tia do with her career? You know what I mean? So it's like a different, I would say that everybody's very different, but I, I've always been that type of person of, I like to do things by myself and I like to have something else just on the sides. Like, I don't want that to interfere with my career. I, I saw this thing uh, this uh, the other day and it, I think it ties in with the women's independence a little bit. And I've personally had this struggle sometimes in relationships in my own life. Snorri won't let you carry your own bags. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Snorri can do that. Yeah. But if it, <laughs> I, I would be like, no, this is mine. Yeah. yeah. There's been times that I've opened a door for a woman and she said, uh, I can do that myself. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. But it <laughs> have to, like, that. that's just being a gentleman. And I love that. Like, we don't have any gentlemen in Iceland. Like, everybody, because all the girls are so independent almost but then you you meet an english guy and they open the door they they can't go through the door before you because that's so rude and it's like that's that's difference like i i would give in on that like a guy that's a gentleman that's a, that's a 
awkward, but it depends. it's different. Sarah, Sarah, um, basically what I'm hearing is this. Oh God! You don't want to. You don't want. You don't want to be. Well, I, I I feel you. Like my wife, there's a rule in my house that no matter what the fuck is going on, right before I go on to have a podcast, no one can pick a fight with me. Don't talk to me. Don't pick a fight with me. Even yeah. if I'm in the wrong, set me up for success. Be nice to me. Love yeah. me. Kiss me. I don't give a fuck. I yeah. slept with your mom. You better not like bring it up <laughs> now because yeah. like I have a podcast to do. Mm -hmm. And and. And you don't want to put yourself in that situation. You don't want to be so – you know that if you were with someone and it was a three, uh, an hour before um, you went out onto the floor to compete, that if they hurt themselves or they got upset or you found out they cheated on you, the whole fucking thing, yeah. you don't want to be vulnerable. You don't yeah. – it's, it's a chink in your armor. I fully fucking get it. Yeah. Like lie to me before I go on a podcast. I don't care. I need to be completely confident and strong. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. And it's you don't have control of what the other person yep. is going to do. Yeah. And to make if you get too reliable on that person, it can interfere with what you're striving for. Yeah. And you and there is no like if my wife, um, if my wife has any emotional fluctuation, I feel it. Like yeah. immediately. I'm, I'm completely lost and twisted up in her shit. Yeah. I have no and I have no barrier. Like no. if she came home, she's sad. Now I'm sad. I mean, there's yeah. no like it's one person. So you're, so, you're saying you're an empath like me? Oh, I uh, crazy empath, em, em, yeah. empath, em, empathetic. Yes, crazy, <laughs> crazy. I hate, I hate. I don't even like to be around other people. I don't want to hurt anyone because I, I, I feel like I would just I immediately hurt myself. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's horrible. But, but um. Yeah, that thing with that thing you brought up with uh, Tia and in in uh, Shane is just is is really truly remarkable. I mean, obviously we don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but yeah, like what if she found out he had another girlfriend? I mean, how the fuck would she yeah. manage that? But, I mean, I think like their trust and they their re reliability on each other is just next level. And I mean, same yes. with Andre, it's like they're used to each other that they know or like they almost know that nothing's ever gonna happen but i've never been that type of person <laughs> i like to just trust in myself and myself is enough for me and uh and that's a little bit like if i would change what i have been doing for the last years and start relying on somebody else i think that would just yeah i, I don't think that i would work well in that way versus they work very well in that way you like have to push it. your own shit down. Like my, yeah. I know my wife has to push her shit down, yeah, and suppress it because yeah. I'm a baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I'm I sure I'm guessing Frederick has to do the same thing. He can't. He yeah. can't be having any of his own shit happen around Annie because Annie has shit to do. Yeah, exactly. And like now they even have a kid, so like he's probably yeah. <laughs> for their for them both. So Annie doesn't feel it, and and I think yeah. I think it's just very different depending on a person what works and what doesn't work. Do you feel like you're missing out maybe? Like that like um no. no. I don't that's the problem. I <laughs> right. That is right. Well and, and it, she said this earlier, you know, and it's it might not it might just might not be the right time. Like there's no reason yeah. that ten years from now she might be in that situation. Yeah, I mean I... I'm gonna I'll I'll find my prince charming uh, after five years when I'm gonna settle and everything. I know that, but for now, I just wanna be able to go to Brazil when Victoria sends me a message <clears throat> and ask in with her without getting permission from somebody and there's drama around it or something like that. So right, yeah, I, I, I everything you're saying makes complete um, sense. There's this, um, I, I guess that there's some excitement in it. Um, uh, it's it's like the difference when you, when you take a shower by yourself. There's really no excitement, but when you take a shower with someone else, there's excitement. Like you're naked in the shower with I someone else. I think that you'll be. I think if you ask Sarah or I, I would, that showering is actually one of my favorite parts of the day, and I do it by myself, and it's and it's very rewarding. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah. I agree. I, I oh. I'm not I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing. Showering is a fantastic thing to do, but but there's a there's a there's a component to when you do it with someone else that's exciting. It's there's a um. It, and for me and Sarah, there's a component of doing it alone that's exciting. It's the end of a day. I've put in the hard work, and now I'm going to spend this ten minutes in this hot water and let my body refresh. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I the woman should never walk on the outside of the street ever. Uh, I uh, Sevon, what's your take on guys walking closer to the street and what? Yes, the woman should never walk on the uh, side of the street. That's just the way it is. I okay, totally about that rule. Okay, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. A Man should always walk on the on the curbside, always. And he doesn't. He sh it shouldn't be. You shouldn't even notice. It shouldn't be weird. He what about sleep? get a guy sleep closer to the door than a girl? Wherever she wants to sleep, you sleep on the other side. That's oh, my okay. rule. Answer, but there's the there's a rule with being a gentleman is that the guy has to sleep closer to the door to protect. Oh, what? It, well, but, I, I maybe for me it's so I could get up in the middle of the night and pee without waking her up. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's based on the most comfortable sleeping position so that you can both sleep in the way that you want. Oh, that's deep, Brian. That's very deep. <laughs> Sarah, how 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 is your um, body when you look at uh, the open coming around the corner? It's excited. It is. Yeah, it is very excited, and um, like I've been traveling so much, and it's just good to come home and settle a little bit. And I've been um, just taking it very easy since Waterpalooza, so. I, I am very excited to get all the doms that I will get this week from starting training again. So, and just ready for the open, you know? Sarah, last year before the open or during the open, you put something out on Instagram that caused has caused a big stir this entire year. You know what I'm talking about? Stirred me. I loved it. I hated it and loved it. What was that? Something in your notes that was for you that said that the open doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean... It, it does really I hate it that it doesn't matter, but I'm glad you wrote it. Yeah. It it does matter, but when you're going to peak at the right time, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but for uh, Susie in my gym that's testing herself out of where she was last year compared to this year, open matters. That's That's their main goal of seeing where they stand and having fun with it, like having Friday night lights and everything. It's... I love open and I love that time of the year when you're just like, you're so excited to watch an announcement and seeing what's going to come out and you're guessing. And yeah, so it doesn't matter, but it matters. Now there's this, there's something going on this year. That's a bit mysterious is that CrossFit has said there's going to be a ranking system and that some way the ranking system will affect the number of available spots to qualify for the games. You, do you know this? She froze. Yeah. Have they released that yet, Brian? No, the the exact nuances of that have not been released yet. I thought they were supposed to be released last. <clears throat> supposed to be by the end of January. Sarah, we're not talking over you. You actually froze. So we're just like filling dead air while the audience waits for you to come back because they're really here for you. The end of January. Okay, so we and must. She can hear us. So I think maybe she should disconnect at this point and come back. Uh, Brian, the technician, says you should hang up Sarah and come back. <laughs> uh, Patrick Clark for Simba. I don't get it. Who's Simba? That's likely a dog. Uh, a guy sleeps wherever she tells you to, the side of the bed she doesn't want to, the couch, the garage, the hotel room. Ah, all these are these are uh, accurate. And yeah. she's gone. Well, maybe she took our advice. Uh, just like Fit Wars Two is supposed to be announced at the end of January, do I know Fit uh, Wars? there might be an, uh, some information coming on that regard before the end of January yet, Kenneth. We'll see. Is that Wad Zombies thing, Fit Wars? Yeah, um, we have. We're very close, actually. I heard he sold it for a half million dollars. <laughs> In fact, I, I I wrote the first uh, version of uh, the workout that we might do for the next iteration of it yesterday. Oh, I can't wait. Send me a text. Uh, Sevon is a beta, so he wouldn't know. I don't, that's not nice. I don't think that's nice. That's not a compliment, right? I don't, I'm not sure. I think he misspelled beta, so I don't know. You, you think he meant uh, alpha? Sevon is an alpha? <clears throat> uh, we're just going to, maybe we need more information. I'm going to see if uh, she's, <laughs> oh, I'm going to see if she WhatsApp me. Let's see. Uh, are you, uh, are, okay. Maybe she's gone for the day. Well, hopefully not, but if she was, she was amazing. Yeah, it was a good 90 minutes. And I were, I was able to work in the Snickers. 
Yeah, I know that was the top of your list today. God, I was like, I did, it wasn't as smooth as I wanted, but I'm glad I got to work it in. <laughs> There's definitely people in the comments that appreciated it. Thank you. It, 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 no one, no one misunderstand me. I'm very, very, uh, people, everyone can do exactly what they want. Enjoy. Well, I'll finish. I'll finish yourself. the spot for you, uh, nice. that I was going to have for her. And, and, uh, but if she comes back, maybe we'll, is it about her showering with you? No, no. It's about the open because, oh, oh, that's right. You know, obviously that comment last year made a big, people have been talking about it and referencing it throughout the entire year. But if you look back at, you know, at Sarah specifically, um, guys, I'll, I'm so sorry. My phone died. <laughs> That's all right. We did our best to fill the air while you were gone. And, okay, good. Uh, everyone was just, it was a different aura when I left, right? Everyone loves you so oh, much. They okay. stayed around anyway. The two people in the audience killed themselves. Oh, I can, I can imagine. So, uh, Sarah, this year, there's the possibility, we don't know all the details, that the Open could actually have a direct impact or some kind of an impact on the number of spots that the European women get to the CrossFit Games. Yeah. You missed in Europe by one spot last year. So one extra yeah. spot is, you know, can make a huge difference Very, for you yeah. mm -hmm. or for, you know, people from your continent. First of all, wouldn't it be nice if they told us what was going on? It would be very nice. <laughs> Very why nice. why what do you care it's, why i would uh, love to get more spots in europe <laughs> oh what, but i mean would it but would it affect your training i guess is what i'm asking like if you no, guys I did mean, know what like why why do you think they should know brian because uh, this is what i've been what i know so far is that there's a possibility that going back at least two years can have an impact on how many spots each continent mm. gets or okay. semifinal gets mm -hmm. okay. and additionally it it sounds like the, the results from this year's open and quarterfinals will also contribute to that. But how mm. much they will contribute to that is what I'm really curious about because uh, I put this thing up on Instagram yesterday because I noticed this weekend, for whatever reason, there's like half a dozen competitions going on around the world with athletes who have hopes to go to the CrossFit Games that are competing in it. But in a lot of, of the those cases, they also compete in regions that if they do competitively well in the opening quarterfinals in the next six weeks, could potentially earn one or two extra That's spots spot. to yeah. qualify. And there are a lot of athletes that if they had had that chance, one or two extra spots in the past two years, their career could have looked a lot different. Yeah. I. What's your opinion about these spots being made from the open and quarterfinals versus the game spots? Oh, great like top question, 20 Sarah. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Well, I, you know, I've been writing and speaking about the distribution of game spots for years now because I, I think very clearly there's been a discrepancy between the performance at the top of the sport uh, from women and men in different parts of the world, and specifically the yeah. women in Europe and in Oceania have been doing very well for the past five mm -hmm. to six years, and yeah. and similarly, the men in North America have continued to be the like kind of the standard. And they're, they're yeah. still doing better than the rest of the men around the world collectively. So I had mm -hmm. thought there might be, uh, you know, this the sport of CrossFit has always been, and it's, I think Austin praised for the fact that it's, it's equal opportunity for men and women. Prize purses are mm -hmm. the same, same number yeah. of game spots, et cetera. But in this case, it's not that we're taking women out of the field or, men, or adding men to the field and making an imbalance this way. What we're really just, what I'm in pursuit of is the most competitive field at the games. And if that means that we have 18 men from North America and 16 women or 14 yeah. women from Europe and 10 men, I don't care where they come from. I just want the best yeah. at the games. Yeah, then you have the right, right competition. So I had thought that, to, the, to your question, because we never knew in the past that the games or semis or quarterfinals or the Open could have an impact on qualifying spots, we should have just started with a clean slate this year. Give yeah. one spot to every semifinal. And let yeah. this year's open and quarterfinals determine how the other 33 oh. are distributed. Yeah. Yeah. And then so you does, can does build upon that. Does it affect your training at all, though, Sarah? No. No. Okay. I mean, these are just stuff that we pretty much don't have control over. But I, I heard some rumors that the girls in Oceania would uh, meet up to make sure that they push each other in the open and get a very good score to get more spots. And I mean, I don't know if the European girls will do the same or not. Like, and I find that when it comes to that, it's not a fair game anymore because 
it becomes a competition way too early of something that shouldn't be in our control. It should be like, I mean, you look at other competitions of just like, let's say Rogue, for example, how many were in top 10 at Rogue? How many were in top 10 at at the games what are the same names there if it's always like seven out of ten are from europe why wouldn't europe get an extra spot like it just makes makes sense but it also makes sense of what you say of like getting a clean slate this year and then learn from this year for next year yeah it's by no means is it an easy you know e an easy decision and it's a lot of responsibility that crossfit yeah. has to make to try to get that right the right so, yeah and and the women in oceana is a great example because <clears throat> Tia's not competing this year. Will her will her performances yeah. from the last two years have an impact yeah. on the number of spots they get? Or because she's not in the field, will they not even include her? Yeah, exactly. And then I I also heard rumors that Kara won't be competing, but I don't know if that's right or not. But so well, it's I already think, two. <laughs> I have this thought that maybe she wasn't going to, but since Tia's out this year, no. she might be like, ah, oh, let's she's go like, one more year. I I'm can going win that for it. Thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But of course, there's also yeah. this exemption rule. So Jamie Simmons hasn't lived in Oceana for a long time. If she applies yeah. for an exemption, will she be able to compete in Europe if she wants? Yeah. And let's just say that Tia for Asia. and Cara. She's back in Dubai. Yeah. Oh, is she back there now? Yeah. Exactly. And she's been in Dubai and she's lived in Dubai for years and years. I mean, the last time yeah. she lived in New Zealand or Australia was probably yeah. eight years ago. Yeah. So if she applies for exemption and competes in Asia, yeah. and which we're, we're, we don't know, and if Cara doesn't compete and Tia doesn't compete, and I know Ellie Turner applied for an exemption because she's living in North America now. Like, didn't then oh, do they okay. it, like if that? And I don't know what, what's going to happen in any of those cases. But let's just say that those four women aren't there. Then do they even deserve then the three have... spots that they're already guaranteed? Yeah. So there's exactly, a lot of factors yeah. in play, and you know yeah. I don't envy that CrossFit has to make that decision. No matter what they no. do, someone's going to say yeah. it could have been better. Yeah, always there are always those comments, but they just have to make a decision and stick with it and make it as fair as they can. Going back two years seems ridiculous to me. I, I can't think of one good argument why you would go back and include people's scores from two years ago. No, I don't understand that either. And two years ago was also COVID and people didn't even have gyms <laughs> to do the open at. So they were doing it at home. And Yeah, uh, Adam says uh, Maddie Sturt is the only happy person on this. Yeah, that would be great for her. And she deserves to go to the games. Yeah. Well, and Caitlin. Yeah, Caitlin, Caitlin Van Zyl. Van Zyl, yeah. And look, there are other there are other really talented women in Oceana that have yes, not had so a, hardly yeah. any opportunity to make it because of the limited number of spots they've had and the fact yeah. that the great performances from those women have not opened up other doors. And that's yeah. why I have in the past written that there can you can have a rolling performance, but I only took it from the games. So yeah. I would say if the qualifiers you have are making the games, and I think you were saying similarly, Sarah, if those are doing well, that should be an indication that there needs to be a spot added in those regions. And if then yeah. you add a spot and they keep doing well, then they yeah. get another one. Because if they're doing well, that means that someone else isn't doing well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sir, I'm going to ask you a leading question. I apologize <laughs> in advance. Are, are you at home? Uh, I'm actually at <laughs> Snorri's place. Ah, Snorri's new office, yeah. Cause okay. uh, I saw a guitar back there, and I'm like, I was gonna see if I could catch you at your boyfriend's house. I was like, oh, no. shit, she's at her boyfriend's <laughs> no. house and this whole not time. Not that good, yeah, not that good. All right, screw that up. Good job. He was gonna Sammy. ask if there was a piano there, and you could play a little outro for us. Yeah, I mean, I have a piano at home, you know. That's why I'm not there, so you couldn't ask me. Uh, Sarah, I can't tell you how appreciative I am that. Uh, I can get a hold of you and that you come on the show. You yeah. are a, uh, a true blessing to the show. I was just looking at the, I'm looking at the live numbers here. It's crazy how many people love you and tune in uh, wherever you go. Thanks for always coming on. Thanks oh. for being so vulnerable. Yeah. Um, I, I think um, you and Brian both touched on it at Wadapalooza. You did seem uh, like you were totally yourself. I think people love yeah. you for how vulnerable you are. And I know it's, it, it, uh, it, it can take a lot of energy, but thanks for always doing it. Yeah, pleasure is mine. I enjoy it a lot, actually. Cool. So it's a win-win for both of us. Yay. Okay, tell Snorri okay. I said hi. Um, yeah, maybe I, I, I hate Only if it's convenient for you, maybe you could tell uh, um, uh, your buddy, uh, uh, Bjorgvin Carl Goodmanson. He's, he's become a little uh, more difficult to get a hold of lately. Maybe you could tell him uh, we'd like to have him I'll, back on. Yeah, I'll talk to him. Slap him around you. a little bit? Okay. He's, also, he's also training in the dark. 
He's got something to prove this year. He taught me how to trade in the dark. Yeah. (laughs) I have. I have. He's on my radar this season. Yeah. Oh, he. Yeah. He should be. I saw a hunger in his eyes at the end of last year's games that told me that he was. uh, He's wanting more. Let let me ask you one more question. Okay, sorry. One more question. Then I'll let you go. How important is it to be? Um, let's talk about weight loss and hormones again. How important is it to be when you get to the games to be as skinny as you fucking possibly can without losing any strength? Is there is there any? Do you have any thought on that? That it's important to be crazy lean but without losing strength. No, no. I would say it's even worse for you. Really? So say- with like all the gymnastics and all of that shit. I mean, I think that if you're as skinny as possible, that your system is in a stressor, like. I would say that it's okay to be like, let's say that it's okay to be lean, but when you're trying to be as skinny as possible and as strong as possible, it just leads to injury and that you're okay. quicker tired. And when you have a five day brutal competition, this should not be your priority. Your priority should be that your uh, glucose storage is, is or gly- glycogen, am I saying it right? Is, is full and like that you are able to actually, are you laughing at me, right? No, no, just your pronunciation. Just your pronunciation. That's it. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's like the most important thing is that you don't fear. That. I think that if you're trying to be as light as possible and then you have no energy, so you force yourself to eat more than you usually do uh, to get that light or lean, it's going to mess with your head. So it's it's not the mar- – like in, in the marathon, when the guy finishes the marathon – uh, every marathon winner is dehydrated. No one ever wins yeah. hydrated. But this is a five day event, and you have yeah. to be smart. You have to be smart. You can't just be like, hey, like maybe what I was saying would have more validity if it's just one workout and you knew it was going to be a lot of pull ups, muscle ups, toes to bar, shit like that. But you're saying, hey, this is a five day event. You can't just. You n- okay. almost need to have some something a little bit extra just in your system. And I mean, I think it's also very individualized. I've always been a person that has like has a very hard time getting lean while Tia was probably born with a 12 pack and like <laughs> you know what I mean so it, it's very it, it's very different for everybody and it's like if I would lose a lot of weight now and just try to have a six pack before the games it would have maybe more effect on me because I've never been like that before versus you it did, would have less very, you did look very lean at that night at the 2019 regionals you looked very lean yeah, I was very lean at that time, and I was very underfueled. I was. You were uh, okay. Yeah, I was uh, vegan, and yeah. Just, You're not doing that anymore. You're not plant based anymore. No, I I've added um, I added fish back, and felt a huge difference there. So I'm just slowly seeing what my body needs. Yeah, congratulations on experimenting with your body. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I yeah, mean. You- you never know unless you try, right? Yeah, it's what life's about. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, yeah. So, I, to answer your question, I think it doesn't matter that you're as light as possible as long as you are fueled enough. That's your priority. Yeah. Just full gas having, time. having, yeah, full gas and just like be like, yeah, it's, it's so individualized of how lean you can get with the amount of training like some girls even just get way too lean and they're trying to eat enough but uh it's, they still just get lighter so i'm definitely not one of them i'll tell you that i wish i was <laughs> sarah thank you brian do you have any uh, farewell part parting message for um miss sigmund's daughter <clears throat> no I, I was laughing because uh two things it's it's glycogen, glycogen. But more importantly i'm just i think it's been a really good uh podcast has been really good for people to see how intelligent you are and thoughtful you are and how much you know about a variety of different things that contribute to your success in this sport oh thank you that's a very good compliment brian well and for those of you who are more superficial and shallow like me i think the importance (laughs) is is that she's single okay sarah (laughs) thank you so much uh for coming on the show you're wonderful uh don't forget to slap uh mr goodmanson around and and, and tell us we said hi thank you Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, sir. Now that you're home again, Sevon, says Wad Zombie, are you going to do four shows a day again? No, I'm chilling. I'm chill. I'm chill. 
I'm not. I, I don't think Dave's coming on today. I I don't. I need to fix that. I'm gonna fix. Where that was later. that uh that skate park that your kids were at? Was that where, on your trip? Yeah, the indoor one. Yeah, there's so there's these skate parks called Woodward. They're named after a, a pro skater like Bob Woodward or something, and they have um and there are these four like, I guess they're the premier indoor skate parks in the uh, in the United States. And I think the first one is up there in Truckee. So I had an opportunity to go up there for four days. My kids skied every morning and then skated every night. It was nuts. My, my, both my kids, all my kids are very, very, very sore right now. Is that, is skateboarding on that, those ramps and in the indoor, is it a lot different than what you guys usually do? Like, was it challenging for them in a new way? I mean, they had mega ramps there, but they're basically these huge drop-ins where you launch into foam. No, they loved it. They, it was very different, but they absolutely loved it. I mean, they, Yeah. They absolutely loved it. Okay. Did they, did they ever I'm, ask you to do it to skateboard with them? Dude, if I get on a skateboard in front of my kids, they'll start crying. Like literally <laughs> tears will come down their face. Don't, don't, you're gonna hurt yourself. Don't. Don't. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Omar. I didn't feel like I was myself today. My my uh sinuses are just getting back to normal after being in Lake Tahoe. So I was kind of having trouble like getting my breathing cadence down. So I didn't feel uh, like myself. But it was nice having Brian here. That's for sure. It's fun. Good cop. We could do like good cop, bad cop, play off of each other, tee <clears> each other up. I got time if you want to, you know, maybe you don't, but if you want to keep it going. She she got bit by a dog. We didn't. Oh, thank you, Brian. It's very kind of you. Um, She got bit by a dog. I forgot to ask her about that. I didn't know that. I like it. I, it um, speaking of building your self-esteem, uh, on uh, on other people's shit I, I like it when people say yeah i like coming on the podcast like when she said that at the end i was like yeah that's, that's a conversation about the self-esteem was a pretty good one yeah there's a lot in there for i'll, I'll be reflecting on that a little bit say that again i'll be re reflecting on that uh, that conversation a little bit me too i'm gonna keep turning that over in my head when i'm showering by myself that is what – that is like fuck values and morals for the sake of them being values and morals. Have values and morals uh, um, so that you can have something that's kind of more uh, uh, abstract to be part of who you are instead of all the superficial things. You're not your Ferrari. You're not your Fran time. You're not your uh, your beard, Brian. I know you're deeply attached to that beard. Um, uh, you're, you're just you're, jealous because everyone's giving you a hard time about shaving yours. It'll be back in two days. Don't worry. <laughs> It'll be back in 10 minutes. I actually thought about doing it last night. I'm like, no, I'll, I'll be stubbly by the morning. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 I like it because now I can, I, I need things explained to me for practical value. I, it's not a uh, seven. You need to um, have morals. So you go to heaven. I'm like for morals and heaven are too abstract for me. Um, but this is, uh, yeah, what we stumbled upon today, what the young Sarah Sigmund's daughter was able to explain to this old dog uh, was valuable to me. Very valuable. I mean, she's, she speaks so well. And <clears throat> you asked her a couple of questions that, like, I was putting myself in her. She's like, man, if you asked me that, I wouldn't be prepared for that question. I wouldn't know how to answer it necessarily. And she was always ready. You think, you think, um, I, 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 there's got to be, do you think that there is some sort of natural law to that, to the courtship process? Like, like I, I've seen, I've seen my, um, I've seen my friends who are very, very nice to women, like exceedingly nice to women, uh, pursue women, do everything the woman wants to to an unsustainable uh, level, and then after, and, and to a point where I think some people would call them like beta males, and then after a couple of years, the um, it's not sustainable. And so, uh, and, and I, I don't know, I feel like at some level, the women start wanting direct, uh, not direction, but they don't want to be making the, like the decisions like that. There's like, like a natural order maybe to men and women, like That's the a, man's going to, yeah, but I don't know. I, I don't, well, I don't what know what I was, this is what I was kind of alluding to with the door thing. It's like, sometimes you open a door for a woman and then they're very appreciative of it and they find yeah. it chivalrous and that you're being yeah. respectful and kind. And other times you open a door for women and they're like, I can do that myself. And I'm like, I know I was just trying to be nice. Like, and, uh, when the, when, well, the that's, that's obvious is what that is. Right. Cause if anyway, then, then I, I, I'll be willing to bet, um, I don't know, someone's life on this. 
if you hold the door open for anyone and, and your immediate response isn't thank you or you just go through the door and don't say anything, um, and anyone who – any woman who does that or man who does that who says, I can hold the door open myself, that person's living their life trapped in their head. There's no reason ever to say that unless you – like that woman's exposing her own insecurity, right? Sure, Some sort I'll, of narrative she has right, in so her head. So let's flip it around. Yeah. So let's say um, – same with the, if a the girl held the door open for me and I said, I don't let women hold doors open for me. That's my own insecurity. I'm being a, I'm being a douche. So let's say I'm going to meet, uh, meet, meet a woman or I'm picking her up and yeah. uh, it's the first time and I go, I get there, I park and I walk around the car and uh, get out and walk around the car and open the door for her. Yeah. She obviously appreciates that gesture. Am I not expected to do that every single time I pick her up? For, and for how long? Like two years later, should I still be doing that? God, I was going to say something really crass. I'm concerned my mom's still listening, so I'm not going to say it. Hey, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you this. How I, I don't know. I don't know. I have know what the answer is for that. But for me, if it's if it's convenient and it makes sense, I always I'll, I'll do that. Especially like with people like my mom or my wife. Meaning, if I'm walking towards the car and the door, I'm going to see the passenger side door before I get to my driver's side door. I'll, I'll probably open the door for my mom. But if I'm not, if I'm already on my side, I'm not coming around to open the door for you. Yeah, or if it's like, I know we're late, so I'm not going to take this extra 20 seconds to do that. Is that a good excuse? Or it's like Yeah, a, yeah. I actually, I just did a 300 air squats yesterday and getting out of the car one extra time, it's not happening. So open the door. What was your time on? Do you know your time on that? No, I'm just using examples. <laughs> oh. 16 years later, my husband still does it. Yeah, that's cool. So if he didn't do it one you day. You have very, very like, what, what nice hair, Jessica. What happens if he doesn't do it one day? Then and you're the only listener we've ever had on Facebook. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Good question. Jessica, what if he doesn't do it anymore? So those are, you know, and those are the things. It's like, that's why communication is important is that, you, you know, sometimes you're going to have these ebbs and flows. The level of expectation might change from one person to the other. And you have to then, you know, this is the, the classic of pick your battles. Like if, if that's can, really important to you to open the door, okay, I can open the car door. Do you think, can a healthy... I guess this that's that's it's going to be interesting to see how a man I would just be I would love to be a fly on a wall to see what it's like to uh, a man to pursue her. What you know. Or the or the opposite way around. Yeah, I'd like to see what happens. If, yeah, if she pursues a man, like what that looks like. Can you imagine if she like asks you out and you're so fucking intimidated and scared by her? You, you freeze. You get like some sort of paralysis. Well, you know, one of the things she said, she said, uh. If I like something, I will go after. I will go for it. Yeah, which I think that again, that's a good like that's a good question for people to ask themselves. When you like something, do you go for it, or do, or do you shy away from it, or do you find a reason maybe not to? Sometimes she does not. She does not. Uh, I think she also explained very clearly. She doesn't want to do anything to expose herself to uh, that would interfere with her goals. That's some that's some champion shit, uh, mindset shit. I don't know if it's healthy or bad or good, but. So I want to put this in perspective for you. The last time that Sarah Sigmund's daughter finished the CrossFit Games, meaning did the last workout on Sunday, 2017. Great. And she's still pursuing it. It's been five years. Yeah. 2018, withdraw injury. 2019, cut like most of the field. 2020, online. 2021, injury. 2022, one spot short from making it. If she makes it back this year. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah. I hope she's like Velner and she'll come on like during the during the events. I don't think she will. Maybe. She's good on the podcast, right? Amazing. Like like yeah. brilliant, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, but I think that like I never panic like so there's going to be too much quiet time with her. No, and she's thoughtful. And I mean the, the other thing is that a lot of times um you know people can get into the, this this career, this pursuit of this career, and they become so focused on that one thing she has mentioned. She's maintained hobbies. She's maintained relationships. She's she's continued to travel the world. So she's continuing to gather experiences and knowledge and information and trying to apply it to her ultimate pursuit of her goals. And I think that it shows in the way that she answers the questions and, and the thoughtfulness that she gives to her responses. I'm glad you came on. I know you had to sacrifice, make some sacrifices. Oh, no, no. It actually was canceled for me. I didn't even have to make the hard decision. Oh. Wasn't that great? 
Yeah. Oh, I have Ray Flesher on tomorrow. <clears throat> Ray Fleeser, my man from uh, Ocean State CrossFit. Hey, that's going to, is it for the affiliate series? Yeah. Ray, Fl- Ray what, Fl- what Flesher. What time is that? 7 a.m. You've never invited me to an affiliate series before. Can I come on this one? Yeah, I would love to have you on it. Uh, 7 a.m. I can come on for, yeah, I'll come on for at least an hour. Good. Wow. That's That'd really be really cool. I like Ray a lot. Yeah. And um, some of you may know of Ray Fleeser because he, and his wife, apparently, well, I can ask him about this tomorrow, both failed a drug test two years ago at semifinals of the Granite Games uh, after making it their team had qualified for the first time in five years, 2017, or then to 2020. What, what, what was he taking? Anything fun? He was take, He knew he was taking steroids. He was doing it intentionally. He thought his correct competitive career was over. It's a really interesting story. I wrote it. I wrote about it. You should go look that one up before the article tomorrow or before the podcast yes, tomorrow. It's I will. on Morning Chalk Up. But um, it, it'll be... He's just a cool dude because he's made it to the games. He's also like done steroids and then made it to the games and failed that test. He's competed with his wife. Hey, how did they know to test him? He qualified for the games. So everyone gets I know, that. but they don't test everyone who qualifies. Oh, uh, that year they might have. It changes wonder, every year. Oh, I wonder if someone told on him. Uh, I'm not sure. But he also owns and runs two very, very successful affiliates in Rhode Island. Like I think 600 plus members each or something like wow. that. Wow, wow. And uh, he, I have ne- like this guy blows my mind. I have never met someone who can like go as hard as he does from 4 a.m. till 10 p.m. and then wake up and do it again the next day. And sometimes he'll do that seven days in a row and then he'll go out and party all night and then he'll still be back at work the next morning. Like he is a totally different breed of character. Well, it sounds like me, Brian, you just described. So I think that we'll have a good one. Uh, soccer mom, he's a very nice guy, he's also a savage rugby player. You got to look up some of his rugby stuff and ask him about it. Then we have Jake Lockard on Tuesday. No way. Really? That's crazy, right? Wait, Jake's coming on? And then, and then on Wednesday, for those, Jake Lockard is uh, the programmer over at uh, Mayhem. Gosh, oh, I, would, yeah. I would love to come on that one too. However, I have a very important meeting that morning that I'm definitely not going to reschedule. Then on Wednesday, we have Dr. Asim Malhorta will be coming on for the uh, second time. You got, a, you got a killer lineup this week. Well, and then, um, um, and then uh, on Thursday, we have Seth Gruber on. He's like the foremost like expert on why you shouldn't do abortions. It's going to be fucking nuts. <clears throat> he may turn yeah. me into like a – I may like see Jesus or something on that show. I'm open to it. I'm open to something weird happening. And then Friday, we have the UFC fighter Alex Caceres. I think he might be the longest tenured U- UFC fighter on the roster. Well, look at that. That's a good week. Say, so, yeah, uh, I don't know if Susan left or not, but yeah, send me the meeting for tomorrow. Or Brian, I will, okay, I will. Brian has a meeting with the Khaleesi. What's going on? What's going on over at the Morning Chaga, Brian? Let's fin- finish on that. What the fuck is going on over there? What can you tell us? Can you tell uh, us anything? <sighs> prefer not to. All right, fair enough. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will have Brian on. We will ask him about the morning chalk up. I'm only letting him off the hook because I have to pee so darn bad. Um, but there are definitely some uh, – there, there are some changes there have, have happened, right? There is. Let me ask you this. Is something changing or are they in some sort of weird holding pattern? I'm not sure. I'm Honestly, I'm trying not to focus on that. Okay. Uh, how, is, how, are things at, how are things at the bar bend, your, your newest uh, 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 home? That's where I have been focusing, and we will have hopefully a lot of really good stuff coming out leading up to the Open starting this week. I know you guys will. They, they're killing it over there. Uh, those of you who don't know, just have them work on their search feature and put the CrossFit shit up in the front more. I don't have to like – I, I hate having I have to type your name in and then go to Google, type in Barb and Brian. Just want to, and just even when I go to the CrossFit – Just bookmark. Just do it one time, and then it's done. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if I know. Brian Friend Bar Bent, click on the author's page, make it a bookmark. You'll never have to type anything again. That's is what it, I did. Is 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 is, is Patrick uh, writing there also, or just taking photos or video or? Yeah, Patrick Clark. Same thing. If you want to find his stuff, it's on the author's page. Something that he started recently that I think is pretty cool is the performance of the week. You can win, win an award basically for having a uh, a great performance, and he's I think three or four weeks into it now, and it's also just doing that. I think has increased our overall awareness of the competitive CrossFit space quite a bit because we're like ear to the ground all over the world trying to find some cool stuff. Hey, since you and Patrick have, have, have come on there, have you guys like 
is the amount of CrossFit stuff on there like just doubled overnight? I think it's like 50 times. Gotcha. Okay. Like look at all these things that, um, times. yeah, that's uh, from Patrick's. Yeah. So Patrick does, a, he does a lot of the in-person competition recaps. Most of the times at these competitions, I'm doing something else. So I try to carry the load in the buildup. And then during the um, competition, he does a lot of work. Yeah. So Matilda Garns was selected as performance of the week when she won the IF3 world championships in Mexico. I already subscribed. I already subscribed to all that. I already subscribed. All right. Thank you, Brian. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I'm glad, I'm glad your family shit was canceled. <laughs> maybe we'll see you tomorrow with Ray. Uh, yes. Not maybe. You will. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I don't know if we're doing any more shows today. Uh, that's it. Okay. Let me do disc golf show later. I'll be around. Okay. Disc golf show with Brian later. Bye-bye. Brian, how much do you make every 